Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm your brother in Islam, Musa San Antonio, here to give a short advice on the role of the Muslim in giving da'wah to non Muslims. We will begin in Alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu wa ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd. Basically, as many of you would know if you had seen some of the talks which I was fortunate enough to give at the peace conference. I came from a non-Muslim background and five years ago I embraced Islam. Now I won't go too much into the exact details of what it is that brought me to learn about Islam, but rather I'd like to look at the role of Muslims in how they conveyed the message, or rather didn't convey the message of Islam to me. If you just look on this day of Arafat, which is the day of Hajj, the Prophet wasallam has said, al Hajju Arafat, Hajj is Arafat. This is the day, the culmination of these five, six or seven days of your Hajj, these few hours between Dhuhr and Maghrib. Allah says more people are saved from the hellfire on this day than any other day. So you can imagine if you had someone making dua for you on that day. If we look at Hajj, whilst Hajj is a major part of Islam, it's one of the five pillars of worship. How can it stand in contrast to Islam in itself? Whilst we would never want to be the one who would be the barrier to someone performing Hajj, we would not want to be the one who is compromising this pillar of worship. How about Islam in itself? How would we like to be a barrier to someone accepting Islam? How would we like to be the one who turns them away from Allah's religion? Of course, we would never want to be like this. Yet, from my experience, this is what I found. Many Muslims, many people who consider themselves Muslims, practicing, non-practicing, from whatever background, they would sometimes become a barrier to Islam. From my experience, from me embracing Islam, if I were to tell you some of the stories, you would truly be amazed. I actually had a friend of mine who was from a Muslim family, a Muslim background. He called himself a Muslim. When I told him I wanted to embrace Islam, he was saying to me, please do not embrace Islam. Please do not embrace Islam. You think, how could he be saying such a thing? Why would you want to stop someone like this? But this brother, may Allah forgive him, may Allah guide him. He was thinking, if I were to embrace Islam, that is myself, if I were to embrace Islam, my family might become enraged. And if they were to do so, they would start pointing fingers. Who was the one who told him about Islam? Who was the one who brought him to Islam? Who was the one who turned him against our family, our culture? And they might point the finger at him. So in this fear of what my family might say, he told me not to embrace Islam. SubhanAllah. Would any Muslim do this? Of course, you'd think, well, you would never want to do this. You would never be in a situation where you would have someone wanting to embrace Islam and you're saying to them, please don't embrace Islam. But if the situation came and the pressure was put on, would you do something like this? And inshallah, you wouldn't. And that's what I hope to offer some advices in regards to these fields so that if it was to ever come, you would not be in such a situation. Because it's not always so clear cut. It's not always... Will you tell this person to embrace Islam or will you not tell this person to embrace Islam? Sometimes you don't even realize that you are the one who might be stopping them from embracing Islam. So in this way, uh, sometimes you might have someone who comes to you and says, tell me about Islam and you will tell them about Islam. But also at that same time, as a Muslim, especially if you are someone who is visibly Muslim, whether it be a male who's uh, wearing a beard, whether it be a sister who's wearing hijab, obviously the people will know that you're Muslim. Your character is your da'wah. In that same way, I, when I was younger, I used to see many Muslims you know, dressed uh, in Islamic clothing going to the mosque. And some of them, you know, you'd stop and you'd talk to them and they'd be the best of people. I remember there was one brother, every time we'd see him going to the mosque, he'd always stop and he'd always uh, say hello to us. He knew that we were non-Muslims, but he was always very kind to us. And it's actually interesting that over time, we saw this man as a figure of everything that was moral. So for example, when we were younger, if we were making trouble, we'd see this man coming and we'd stop making trouble. Even though we weren't Muslims, we'd even sometimes when we'd go to the local alcohol store to buy some alcohol, we had to go home on, uh, past the mosque. So from the alcohol store to our home, we had to pass the mosque. So we'd always try and go quickly past there in case this man saw us because we had this fear in our hearts. We thought, if he sees us, what will we say? Even though for us, as non-Muslims, it was permissible, it was halal for us to drink alcohol, we had this fear of this man because he was someone who was so kind to us. He was someone who was so generous. Sometimes when we were sitting around, he'd come and he'd bring us food from the mosque. 
This was a man who no doubt was a bridge to Islam. He was someone who showed us the good character of a Muslim. He was someone who made us love Islam. So much so that uh, when we'd see people doing activities at the mosque, like one time there was someone who had done some graffiti, some spray paint over the fence of the mosque. We saw this man and some others cleaning the fence. And even though we weren't the ones who did this, we felt bad, so we began to help them. We had this, there was a love between us just because of this character. In that same way, you can have a character which turns the people away from Islam. Many Muslims that I met, you know, they would have the worst of characters. They would steal from you, they would lie to you, they would do all of the things that a Muslim shouldn't be doing. And you'd say to them, you know, as a Muslim, should you be doing this? And they would, they would freak out, I'd say, you know, you're being a bad Muslim. And they'd say, you can't tell me if I'm a bad Muslim or not. This isn't up to you, you're a non-Muslim. What do you know? Leave me alone. Don't tell me anything like this. Don't advise me. So this is a character which turns you away. You think, why would I want to be one of these people? Because brothers and sisters, for those who do not know about Islam, and the majority of the people who are not Muslims, really, they have a very limited knowledge about Islam. All they know is yourself. You are the one who is there to convey the message. They don't have the books of Hadith. They don't have the Qur'an to read. They don't have the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. They don't have the stories of the companions. All they know about Islam is you and your character. And if your character is deficient, they will see Islam as deficient. Even though this is not doing justice to Islam. I fortunately, if I saw the bad character of Muslims, I would do justice. I would say, well, maybe that's what they're doing, but I want to see what Islam says. But many people, they don't have access to learn about Islam, nor do they have the desire to learn about Islam. So really, they're accepting Islam, they're learning about Islam, their understanding Islam is upon your shoulders. If you have a classmate who is a non-Muslim, you are the one, it's upon you to bring Islam to them. And could you imagine, so many people you will meet each day and you have not told them anything about Islam. Imagine that there's one person in one of your lectures, in one of your classrooms, in any situation where you have in school and you were sitting next to this person and you knew this person and you spoke to this person and you never told them about Islam. On the day of resurrection, you might see this person being put into the hellfire and they will be saying, you, you, you were the one, you knew me, you were Muslim, you had this message and you didn't convey it to me. Could we imagine this, the severity, subhanAllah. We want every person to embrace Islam. We want to spread this message from one corner of the globe to the other. We want to tell everyone about it, what we have. It's something which is not a secret. It's something which we're not hiding away. It's not a, a treasure that we don't want to share. Rather, this is a treasure that we do wish to share. And it's a treasure that if we were to give, it would only increase in its wealth. It would never diminish. So SubhanAllah, this is a message that we have to have to spread. It's a message which when we spread it, it benefits us. So sometimes you might give a book to someone, give them a pamphlet, give them a CD, and all of these things were benefits. Like for myself, all of these things, I was given them and they benefited me. But ultimately, you can't leave it at that. Because you give someone a book, they might not read it. You give someone a CD, they might not listen to it. You give them a DVD, they might not watch it. So rather, what we're going to have to do is try as much as we can to give the da'wah from our own character. We're going to have a short break here, inshallah, and we will resume after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, blessings, and mercy of God Almighty be upon you all. We'll begin back to where we just were. As I was saying, brothers and sisters, for those who do not know about Islam, and the majority of the people who are not Muslims, really, they have a very limited knowledge about Islam. All they know is yourself. You are the one who is there to convey the message. They don't have the books of Hadith. They don't have the Qur'an to read. They don't have the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. They don't have the stories of the companions. All they know about Islam is you and your character. And if your character is deficient, they will see Islam as deficient. Even though this is not doing justice to Islam. I fortunately, if I saw the bad character of Muslims, I would do justice. I would say, well, maybe that's what they're doing but I want to see what Islam says. But many people, they don't have access to learn about Islam, nor do they have the desire to learn about Islam. So really, they're accepting Islam, they're learning about Islam, their understanding Islam is upon your shoulders. If you have a classmate who is a non-Muslim, you are the one, it's upon you to bring Islam to them. And could you imagine, so many people you will meet each day, and you have not told them anything about Islam. 
Imagine that there's one person in one of your lectures, in one of your classrooms, in any situation where you have in school, and you were sitting next to this person, and you knew this person, and you spoke to this person, and you never told them about Islam. On the day of resurrection, you might see this person being put into the hellfire, and they will be saying, you, you, you were the one. You knew me, you were Muslim, you had this message, and you didn't convey it to me. Could we imagine this, the severity, subhanAllah, we want every person to embrace Islam. We want to spread this message from one corner of the globe to the other. We want to tell everyone about it, what we have. It's something which is not a secret. It's something which we're not hiding away. It's not a, a treasure that we don't want to share. Rather, this is a treasure that we do wish to share. And it's a treasure that if we were to give, it would only increase in its wealth. It would never diminish. So SubhanAllah, this is a message that we have to have to spread. It's a message which when we spread it, it benefits us. So sometimes, you might give a book to someone, give them a pamphlet, give them a CD, and all of these things were benefits. Like for myself, all of these things, I was given them and they benefited me. But ultimately, you can't leave it at that. Because you give someone a book, they might not read it. You give someone a CD, they might not listen to it. You give them a DVD, they might not watch it. So rather, what we're going to have to do is try as much as we can to give the da'wah from our own character. This message which we have, this message of Islam, it's not something that we wish to hide from the people. Rather, it's something that we want to share. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as God Almighty says in the Quran, after a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, wal asr, inna l-insana la fi khusr, illa al-lazina amanu wa amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil-haqhi wa tawasaw bil-sabr. The basic translation and meaning of which is by time. Allah is swearing by time. He says, indeed, surely mankind is at loss. All of mankind are losers, except for those who believe. They believe in Allah, they believe in Islam, and they do righteous deeds. And then after this, they convey to people, they convey to them the message of truth, and they convey to them to be patient. We see in this, Allah is basically telling us the prerequisites for us to enter Jannah, the prerequisites for us to earn the mercy of Allah. After believing and performing righteous deeds and doing all these things, Allah says to convey the truth to the people. So it is uh, compulsory upon us. It is something that we must do. We must spread this message of Islam. However, not always is spreading the message of Islam what we have come to to usually know about. Sometimes we think, okay, we want to give da'wah. That means we're going to go and debate with some Christians. That means we're going to go see some non-Muslims and tell them that their religion is wrong. This is not always da'wah. At the same time, it's not always da'wah just to simply give a pamphlet to someone, just to simply give a CD. Rather, it's many things. You have, uh, for example, for myself, people would come to me and they would say to me when I was a Christian, they would say, your religion is wrong. And this wouldn't really do anything. It would not want to bring me closer to Islam. Rather, it would just get me enraged. That's not enough. It's not enough just to show them that their book is wrong. Rather, we must show to them that our book, that the Quran, Islam is the truth. We must show them this. As one of the brothers, he was once mentioning, we have someone like uh, Ahmadi that, rahimahullah, may Allah have uh, mercy and may he enter him and his family into Jannah, Jannah al-Firdaus al-A'la, inshallah. We have someone like him who was a great person at debating with the Christians. And sometimes the Muslims, they see this and they only take that lesson from him. They only take the debating. So they come and they debate and they want to smash the Bible. So one of the brothers, he was mentioning about this. One of the other people who are active in Dawah, he was saying to him, the Bible, you don't have to smash it because the Bible can be a bridge to Islam. And I can attest to that for myself. If Muslims came to me and said, your Bible says that God is one. Your Bible says, for example, that the person should grow a beard, they should not drink alcohol. This would be something that had it have been showed to me at that time, I would have said, that's very interesting. This is something I didn't know about. And it would have actually brought me closer to Islam. Because in essence, we find the Christians are practicing the antithesis of this. They are the ones who are saying that God is three. They're saying that God has a mother, God has a son, all of these things which the Bible does not mention. So if I was to confirm this belief in what the Bible is saying, it would actually bring me closer to Islam. So you don't just have to smash the Bible. The Bible, as I said, it can be a bridge to Islam. 
So you have to be very wise in giving this da'wah. Sometimes what we think of as what we perceive as da'wah because of what a few people have done, it's not always the right thing. And at that same time, I've met many people and they're very active. They've watched some talks by Zakir Naik, may Allah reward him. They've watched some talks by Ahmed Didat, may Allah reward him, or many of the other da'is. And subhanAllah, they get very energetic and they say, let's go give da'wah. And subhanAllah, they do not know their limits. They do not realize that sometimes what you're saying to the Christians or to the Muslims, it might actually be counter effective. So if we know, for example, that generally when we're speaking to people, we are not very good at conveying certain messages. Sometimes it might be best not to talk about Islam to people because what we might convey to them, it might be wrong. We might be limited in knowledge. We might be limited in the way which we convey ourselves. All of these things. So it would sometimes be good for us to just smile. And subhanAllah, there are actually many times, it's not just one or two or three, there are many times where brothers have actually embraced Islam because of a smile from a Muslim. And we know that a smile is a sadaqah, a smile is charity, that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa tells us of this. One such story which I can tell you about, there was one brother, he was at a bus stop, and he was waiting, waiting, and it's very mundane, it's very banal, it's very boring standing at a bus stop. So he saw this Muslim who smiled at him, and he was intrigued, he said, Wow, like this person, it makes you feel better when this happens. So it opened up dialogue between them. And because of this, they began talking about Islam. And after some time, this brother actually embraced Islam just from this smile. So sometimes this might be all that you have to do. Sometimes you can give a gift to a non-Muslim. Sometimes you can, you know, as I mentioned before, give a CD, give a pamphlet and leave it at that. But if you know, for example, that you are someone who is able to talk about Islam, you are able to convey the message as best as you can in your words, then go for it. Do not stop, brothers and sisters. Be the one who opens this dialogue. Again, Brother Ahmed did that. May Allah reward him. When he was in Melbourne, one of the brothers was telling us the vigor that he had, the love he had for spreading Islam. They were actually in their hotel and they were going up the elevator. And there was a woman who was in the elevator with the two brothers. And generally, when you're in an elevator, you're there for maximum 5, 10, maybe 15 seconds at most. But this did not stop Brother Ahmed Didat. Subhanallah. He introduced himself to this woman. He said, nice to meet you. My name is Ahmed Didat. I'm the president of so-and-so foundation in South Africa. And I'm a Muslim. And I'd like to tell you just a little bit about our religion of Islam. So in the limited time he had, he told her about the basics of Islam. And as they got out of the elevator, he said to the brother that was with him, he said, every single person is a potential Muslim. Subhanallah. Do we look at things like that? Do we see our neighbors who we might have lived next to for five, 10, maybe even 15 years? Do we look at them as potential Muslims? Our non-Muslim family members, do we look at them as potential Muslims? Do we often tell them about Islam or do we treat them harshly and we don't show them the true character of a Muslim? Our classmates, the people we'll meet in the street, you might just meet someone once. But if you tell them about Islam, even just a little bit, Tell them basically, we as Muslims, we believe in one God. We as Muslims, if you're talking to a Christian, you can tell them that we love Jesus, peace be upon him. I know myself, this is actually one of the things which opened the gates to Islam for me because I never knew that Muslims believed in Jesus, peace be upon him. I actually rather had a Muslim friend, may Allah forgive him, when I was a non-Muslim, he felt very uh, strong about his love for Islam, even though generally he wasn't someone who was practicing Islam. But he had this love, this uh, defense for Islam. So when I used to talk about Jesus and I used to talk about the Bible to people, he got very defensive. And in his ignorance, because he was not learned about Islam, because he was never taught about Islam when he was younger, he began to abuse Jesus, peace be upon him. He was not even aware that we as Muslims, we love Jesus. We believe he is the Christ. We believe he is a prophet. We believe he will return. All of these things, he was not aware of it. So he began to abuse him. Now this, of course, it's not a bridge to Islam. Rather, this is something which is a barrier to Islam because you're abusing non-Muslims. You're abusing them in what they believe. And Allah says, do not make fun of the gods of other religions, lest they mock Islam, lest they mock Allah, lest they mock the Quran. So we have to be very careful in this, subhanAllah. You have that gate where you can open and you can say to the non-Muslim, we love Jesus as much, if not more than you do or you can abuse the non-Muslims in their faith. So you have this choice, as I said, you can be the barrier or you can be the bridge, whether it be in a statement such as this, whether it be in your character, whether it be anything that you do, subhanAllah, because when the non-Muslim looks at you, 
they see you as Islam. So many people, they see me in the street, I might be wearing a thobe like this, I might be wearing a cap, something which makes you, uh, it distinguishes you as a Muslim. And people, you can see that, like they're sort of looking at you and they, they're very inquisitive, there's something they want to ask you. And sometimes they might come up to you, sometimes they might not. So when I see this situation, I go to them and I say, hello, how are you? And I'll usually find that they want to learn something about Islam. We are the ambassadors of Islam. We are the people and they will see us. They will want to know about Islam. If they have questions, they might go to the internet. They might turn to the encyclopedias. But for the ones who want to do true justice, they will go and ask the Muslims about it. Because sometimes you might find misinformation. So it's always best to verify it with the Muslim. And even if they don't, we as Muslims can bring the message to them. Sometimes it might be as simple as uh, performing some certain things at, at your university, at your school, having a table, giving out free sweets. This is one of the things which I actually found very effective. If we had a da'wah table, we would have books, CDs and so on. And you know, we had the people there to physically give the message of Islam. And we'd get so-so response. But when we actually had a big table of Lebanese sweets and dates and free drinks and things like this, we see people would come up and they'd say, oh, well, do you mind if we have some of these sweets? And we'd say, sure, go ahead. And they'd say, well, what are the sweets for? Is there some celebration that you're having? Is there some festival? And we'd say, no, we just have some sweets that we wish to give to you. And of course, that was our pure intention. It wasn't to sucker them in. You know, if someone just took some sweets, we'd be happy with that, that we didn't feel compelled to tell them, now you must learn about Islam. So as soon as they'd see this kind gesture, it would open their hearts and they'd say, oh, you know, while I'm here, what are these DVDs that you have? So we'd explain and we'd say, you know, take some, hopefully you enjoy it. We left contact details on them. If there's any questions, you can always come here and ask us more about Islam. So this, is, again, it's a bridge towards Islam. Just the fact that we were there, we were smiling, we were giving out free sweets. And then after that, we were able to give the message of Islam to them. So when we, uh, in our daily lives, as best as we can, with our work colleagues, with our uh, schoolmates, with our family, as best as we can, we want to convey Islam in the best of natures. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we've seen, he was the best in character than non-Muslims. So brothers and sisters, are we going to be that person who our character will convey Islam to the non-Muslims? We will be the ones who will bring Islam to them, who will tell them about the beauty and truth of Islam, or will we be the ones who keep them away from Islam, who turn them away, who are barriers to them? Inshallah, we will be the ones who continue to carry this message until Islam covers from east to the west. And I will finish here. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika, ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.